electrical fall. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. It's got a lot. Okay, the actuator's blocked. Hello and welcome to another Kyle Connor YouTube channel video. You join me in my basement with two boxes. So Christmas came early this year. Uh, you guys know we're installing an Autel DC fast charger at the office on the north side of town and throughout those things where, you know, they said, hey, do you want a DC charger? I'm like, yeah, we'll install it, we'll do the videos. They also were like, we, Autel uh, makes EV diagnostic equipment and they're, that's what they're really known for in the automotive world. And they said, hey, we got a full like, I don't know, $7,000, $10,000 diagnostic kit that like dealerships and service centers use. Do you want one? And I'm like, hell yeah, send that thing over. I want to play around with this. So they sent over their Ultra Maxi Sys Ultra EV system, which looks like a uh, you know, giant iPad with some connection gear, and then their EV diagnostics upgrade kit. And essentially what I'm going to be able, but this isn't sponsored. They just sent it over. I don't think they were expecting a video. I just wanted to unbox these with you guys and try them out. Um, essentially what we're able to do is to log into all of the modules of the vehicle, super, you know, automotive OE grade diagnostic equipment here. So we can see everything on every EV battery module, state of charge, state of health of battery packs, which I think will be really interesting to do a video for the reviews channel to go through each one of my electric cars and see what the stated state of health of the battery pack is. That should be really interesting. And many other things. This upgrade kit I'm really excited about because if we take a battery out of a car, we go to a junkyard and find a dead car or something, I'll be able to plug directly into the BMS of the battery pack. With this, we can wake it up by applying 12 volt power to it and see what's going on with that battery pack. So we'll really be able to plug in to everything. This has like every port for every major electric car. And as new EVs come out with new ports, they'll be able to send me those so we can have those uh, going as well. So basically, let's, uh, let's open this thing up. So me and opening things never go super well, but I'm going to open this up with you for the first time. Okay. So this is the main unit. Am I doing this correctly? Yes. It says insert. This one comes out. This is like pro level diagnostic equipment. This is crazy. I'm not even really sure how to do this. So it comes in this super nice box. Okay, cool. Let's pull this out. Holy smokes. So we can leave that and then we get boom. So I can roll up to review a car and, <laughs> and plug this in. The reason this is nice is because we use like Scan My Tesla or Leaf Spy, and those are specific applications for those vehicles. But this will work on everything, and it's we can reset modules, we can clear codes, we can learn about what's happening with a car with some fault codes. So come around this side as I open this up and see what's in here. Whoa, buddy, this is sick. Okay, so this is the main, <laughs> this is crazy. This is the main piece of hardware. This is like a giant TV screen right here. I don't even know what's going on with it. We got all the USB ports, SD card slot on this side. We have HDMI out. We got a power button. And it says, please peel off no. after <laughs> application is completed. Why can't we do it? I do that. Alyssa wants to do that. Okay. Um, smart diagnostics, maxi sys ultra EV. Um, this is crazy. I, my understanding is like Autel basically reverse engineers every major electric vehicle or every major vehicle on the market. When like F-150 was coming out, F-150 Lightning and EV6 and all these cars, apparently like the guys from Autel in the US were buying all these new EVs, putting them in shipping containers, shipping them to the office in China so they could get all the data so that by the time that they would reach third-party repair shops, they would have everything. So um, pretty freaking sweet. So it says unlock, swipe to unlock. There we go, internet connection. And then we have all of these things that we can do. <laughs> wow, battery testing. This is so cool. We can upload new software to these. I mean, just an insane amount of things. We have a waveform generator. Check this stuff out. We can take screenshots. We have Chrome. Gosh, I probably shouldn't hit too many buttons without knowing what the heck to do. So anyway, we have the main screen here with a whole bunch of information, screen cleaning stuff. 
All right, let's put that, strap that thing back in. We then have our Maxi Flash DCMI, which you can actually hang up, which is kind of cool. And it has DC in, you have communication and some power, USB, I don't even know what all these are supposed to do. I literally know like next to nothing about vehicle diagnostics and you know, I could probably brick a car with this stuff. I'm not really sure, but we also have, oh my goodness, some pins, some fuses. I'm not even going to open this. Yeah, here's everything that this has. Yeah, don't know, but I'm glad we have it. <laughs> what the heck am I going to do with this thing? I have no idea. Uh, I actually think this would have been really cool for some of you who haven't seen the Out of Spec Reviews video. I just bought a Mercedes B-Class electric that has some problems. And in the video, I said that it had an onboard charger problem. But it turns out the onboard charger is fine and works okay. It's actually a problem with the DC to DC converter that the previous owner paid like $7,000 to Mercedes to fix it. And I, my guess is they didn't fix it properly. And then, you know, something happened and the car wouldn't charge and it kind of became a brick. We could have found all of that out pre-purchase if I just brought this kit. We also have a docking station. What the heck? Check this out. So I can dock my iPad looking thing into there and that's how we charge it. This is insane. <laughs> this is like Leaf Spy on steroids. This is crazy. And then we have some obd connection into the vcmi flash system okay then there's accessories oh baby hell yes so all this is gonna stay this organized and neat right honestly i don't know if i'm qualified enough to even use any of this <laughs> so we have like breakout lead multimeter test lead secondary ignition pickup i don't even know what i would do with any of this stuff so these obviously go into all of these ports here on the uh, VCMI. And we have some like, uh, I don't know, moisture pickup things. We have clipper cables for the 12 volt on the leads. Wow. Okay. Literally we'll need to take many courses on this. I've already taken actually one course with Autel. I met one of their lead instructors and he was trying to walk me through some of these things. And I'm like, I, you know, I'm not the most handy person on the planet. So this seems like more, more of a tie in situation than, than anything. Um, okay, so let's close turn this back. Off. Yeah, I'm going to actually use it. I want to plug it in. I actually want to plug it into the smart car. The reason I want to plug it into the smart car is Mercedes uses a locked OBD connection. So if I plug in like a uh, car scanner or the, with the, um, I don't know, with my little OBD thing, I can't get any data off the smart car. But with this... I think they've hacked the Mercedes stuff and I can get all the data out of the smart. So let's go for round two. This is really, where did I put the scissors? Oh, right here, right here. Got them. This is really the big deal because this I'll be able to plug into like a whole bunch of connections. So like, for example, we all know Tesla doesn't use OBD2 in their vehicles. They have a specific port and we'll be able to plug into those. So insert, pull this out. There we go. Sweet. And then this opens another identical carrying case, just a little bit smaller this time around. This is freaking sick. Um, so this is how we actually get the connections to proprietary stuff on the vehicle because with this system, I don't have to go through OBD because OBD doesn't actually have every single piece of communication and line of, you know, data on the vehicle. Specific modules have their own connection diagnostic ports, and these are just connections for, <laughs> this is so nicely laid out. These are just connections for the most popular ports on the vehicle. So packing list, don't even know whole bunch of leads. And so the system, when I plug it into a vehicle or tell it what I want to do, it'll say, okay, grab connector BPTCO203 slash 01. And then I can plug this and this and this. Uh, actually, I would imagine I plug this and this into some adapter and then this goes to the VCMI 
box, communication box. And this is like, you know, who knows, F-150 Lightning or <laughs> I, I literally don't even know, Mercedes Connection. And then here's an EV Diagnostic communication box. So maybe this is what I plug it into. Yeah, so here's the OBD2 and then like BMS. So this is all BMS related stuff. How crazy is this? So this is like for all of the known EVs on the market use these variety of connectors on their things. And then of course, as new EVs come out with new connectors, they'll become available on Autel's site and I'll be able to purchase those. We'll just have a bunch of these little leads stuck together somehow. I'm not even sure. Oh yeah, like so. Zoop. Sick. This is insane. Um, what I want to do is actually just very basically not, not get into any of this stuff right now. I just want to plug it into an OBD port on the car and see how that works. So let's open this up again. We don't need to go crazy in depth, but I would like to like, if we take the battery out of my leaf or something like that, um, we can hook up this stuff to there. Of course, as we get into EV conversions, we could play around. So let's close this up. Let's break out the normal box. I'm having trouble closing this thing up. This is supposed to go on the outside, on the outside. Gosh, there we go. Boom, boom. So if anyone needs to scan anything, come by my house and we'll plug in some stuff because I'm not qualified enough to do it. <laughs> this is like, you gotta pull like a battery out of a car and plug this thing into it, I don't know. Maybe one day we need to get a lift and Ben Pack hit us up. Soon. <laughs> crazy so what's the update um so i'm just logging in setting up an account and uh, i have to enter in every, all the information but uh actually just because i think this is getting a little complicated why don't you peel this off with the lighting Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. all right so i'm setting up my account i can add a photo of yourself add allow personal center to access photos it basically runs on android this thing to take yeah. pictures. Does it have a camera? Yeah. Whoa, yeah, camera. Yeah. Alyssa, get in my photo. Yeah, it's right here. Okay, and there might be a front one here. Tag your photos with the location, sir. What? It's hard to see. Whoa, it's got a camera on this thing. Okay, so I think we're going to have to flip this around. Selfie why style. Alyssa, why don't you take a picture of me? Oh. For the, <laughs> I think that might be the easiest. <laughs> Okay. You you feel you got to film what you're doing. Like this thing is not. <laughs> I wish you guys could see what I'm looking at right now. <laughs> this is important. This is my Autel scan tool profile photo. But let me show everyone what I what I've been looking at here. <laughs> <laughs> Taking a picture. Of the... <laughs> <It's new. laughs> yeah, I think they make smaller ones. Yeah, maybe there's there's got to be a screen brightness setting. There I am sitting in the smart car. See, you, you really true. can't tell. So we've got the profile photo taken. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's very glary. There it is. You can roughly make it out. So it says working experience in years. Zero. And uh, we're just going to hit zero year. <laughs> and then yeah, age and then all your stuff. So here's Kyle trying to figure out a user manual, which is always extremely successful. Yeah, I think it seems pretty basic. Yeah. What we need to do is we need to go, yeah, uh, OBD in. This is to update software, the flash VCMI, but I don't know if we always need to do that. And everything goes through this. And then I plug this into USB to here. I think might be how it goes. So what I've done viewers is I connected our VCMI box to the OBD port. And I believe that then has a wireless connection to this. I just want to take you here inside the garage because the lighting is so bad outside that it'll be much better in here. So we'll do it on the hood of Judy, the old Range Rover. So I'm connected now Bluetooth wise to what's plugged into the smart car OBD system. And it says that there's a update and it's beeping away in there. But Huh, now we've lost connection. We lost Checking Wi-Fi. Oh, please make and connect a note. We've lost the connection. Well, we always lose Wi-Fi randomly. No, we're, it's, this is all Bluetooth. Now we're connected. Oh. So let's go home. Let's go to new energy, which is for their term for uh, electric vehicles. And let's go to 
auto detect what it's plugged into. Let's see if it can tell what, what we're in. Of course I can go to smart and all this stuff. So it's auto detecting the well, car. We've got it plugged in on the charger and I went through the system and it's now diagnostic system initializing on the smart car. So we're almost there. I don't know what that means. Things in the diagnostic world take some time apparently. That was so quick. You're so impatient. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, look at all the modules. Okay. So we have click to view details. Next step. Click switch to display. Ah, uh, okay. Click system for scanning. Tap to enter the intelligent diagnostics. Okay. So I can zoom in. So this is everything that's connected to the OBD on the smart car. You get your Gua Auf, your SIRS. <laughs> This is all your safety related stuff. Your, coma, your BMS, your yeah. ESP. Yeah, let's Ooh, let's do ESP. Well, we would see a lot of oh, we yeah. could flip the switch and freak that thing off because I got an ESP cut off. I let's know. go to BMS. Battery management system. This is what I want to see. So now we're reading the battery module on the smart car. Wow, how cool is this freaking thing? So if you look over there, you can see that's the smart car with the box in there. We're wirelessly connected here. And so now we can get some live data. Really? Whoa. Okay. So let's say battery cell. That's how Mercedes calls it. Look at this. It's at 351 volts. <laughs> this is so cool. What the heck? This is so cool. So is this how we go back? No. Mm -hmm. How do I? Oh, yeah, maybe this one back yep cooling component g5 it's of eight degrees celsius ah so the battery packs at eight degrees celsius roughly eight to ten so that's the minimum and the maximum temperature well i don't know what those do <laughs> this is so cool okay what else can we see about it okay so we want to see ecu information Let's check that one first. So this is all the information, the software version and everything. We get our trouble codes. Are there any trouble codes for the battery? That would be good to know. Electrical fault. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. It's got a lot. Okay. The actuator's blocked. So these are all different messages that have never shown up on the car. Which is not necessarily a bad thing. Like sometimes there's just little hiccups here or there, depending on things. So the most recent one, which is POA0A16, is an electrical fault exists in the interlock circuit of the high voltage onboard electrical system. The limit value for electrical voltage is not attained. Wow. So a lot of these may have all happened at one time. It may have had an issue. But if I click on that, I don't know. So we have... So those are trouble codes. Active test. Determination of, of status of high voltage battery. Value, 46.64 amp hours. What? This is a log. Can print it out through the next screen. Continue. Completed. What did it do? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just sitting here on my couch now doing a diagnostic uh, trouble code scan of every module. So it's just running through. You can see we're 47% through. It scans each module and then it'll pop up with how many issues are each in, in each one. And of course, the car shows no trouble codes on it. So these are all hidden internal codes and most of them mean nothing. Um, so yeah, these are things that could just be stored from weird anomalies. But uh, really cool to have this data. So the smart shows 59 trouble codes. How do I see those? Whoa, let's not do anything crazy here. Um, report. Nope. Oh, total of 20 vehicle systems have been fault. Ah, okay, so ESP has two faults. All of these things we saw. Anyway, so the brake pedal switch is faulty. The system power supply is faulty. Uh, data received from traction control system module were implausible. That could be when we were sliding it around in the snow because we have an ESP cutoff switch and sometimes it does some weird things. Instrument cluster power supply is too low. Again, these are all just weird little anomalies that have happened. 
So this is your signal acquisition on driver's side, short circuit to ground, I don't know, all these little things, TPMS, current, so this is current and stored, tire pressure three is low, okay, no problems. So sick, and it just goes on and on and on and on. Well guys, I wanna say a huge thanks to Autel for sending me this kit. It's definitely uh, gonna be a whole new world of learning. Of course, it works with combustion vehicles in the normal diagnostics menu, but this new energy one is really optimized for EV. There's a whole bunch of battery pack testing we can do in here. I haven't even figured out the half of it, but I'm gonna update the software, download all the newest stuff, play around with it on my cars. And then once I figure out what the heck I can even do with this thing, maybe I'll make some videos with it. And certainly I'll be bringing this with me before I buy any new electric car to figure out what's wrong with it before I take delivery. So can't thank all tell enough. Again, wasn't sponsored, super love this. Uh, and uh, again, if anyone's in the Colorado area and needs some scanning, come on by. I'd love to put this thing through the paces. We'll see you on another one soon. Bye-bye.